imaginary gallery it's TJ here again and tonight's discussion is regarding how the narcissist or other cluster bead monster may try to steal your identity I'm not necessarily meaning like credit card fraud or that kind of thing unless of course you keep them around longer than you should then it may come to that I'm referring to the earlier stages because believe it believe me I've been through it with more than one and I'm here to help you where there was no one there to help me so I had to just experience it but the deal with this is one thing you may pick up on which I did with the few it's well first you need to realize what you're dealing with because you don't want to believe this when you meet this person you want to believe this nice person is really a nice person but if you think about it from a different viewpoint you may notice things like stories you've told are miraculously mirrored back to you which I experienced a few times with a few and it's just it's really eerie because your story of course is real and then when you ask this other person about their story and they come back with the same one you gave well it's kind of like you already know that story because you already told it but then you also know that you told it and you're like uh, and you think I told you that story and they will use your stories for you and I told you in other videos you may pick up on this because again human beings are built they have a built-in gut feeling so if like yesterday I told you oh that person oh well we were going to meet but we didn't because of whatever well then if a week or two later you ask this other person hey who is that and you hear well we were going to meet but we didn't well your brain is like that's what I said and it's kinda like you have to accept the fact it's hard to take but the person you're with is an empty hollow monster shell who's a, basically a robot who's not human who is that's what I'm referring to taking your identity from you and there some of them are so retarded they don't even realize that they're using the same story that you gave them back to you and it's again in a regular regular reality world it's kind of like a no-brainer like you're copying me but with these people they'll just act as if that's not the case and that's why I tell you in other videos don't say hey that story sounds just like the one I told you are you copying me well I'll give you a background on why it's not a good idea to say that because again these people are scam artists they are there for very primitive desires from you which of course they would never say but I'll put it to you this way because I've made the mistake over and over and I finally reached the point of understanding it doesn't work but anyway it's like this which I may have said this before but pretend that you are assigned to go rob a bank you've been given a specific set of instructions to follow act this way act that way turn this way turn that way don't say this do say that and let's just say that you start this process well if you are starting this process and somebody comes up to you and says hey I noticed that you said this and you said that and you did this and you did that are you here to rob our bank do you honestly think if you're there to rob the bank you're going to say yes you caught me oh no you're gonna be like you're crazy get out of my way because and that's exactly what these people do because they are performing a scam and they do not want to be found out and if you can like pick up on the clues and you're like uh, I think you're here to scam that is not going to help you because again you're dealing with like the bank robber he's there to rob the bank so if you use your normal full range of emotions empathy thinking well if I ask him straight on he's got to answer no they don't they have a mask on they are not a real person again like you are they have a fictitious retarded mask on 
So it doesn't work. Those tools do not work. But I have a real-life example of how, I mean, I gave one, but that's kind of shallow. I've got a more deep one, which I found to be sickening. But I, uh, we've heard my, st I'm not here to give some crybaby sob story. Oh, I was abused. Oh, please feel sorry for me and give me money. No, I, but I can see what I went through and I can reflect on it and, <laughs> and learn from it. So none of that crap, but there was a situation I was involved in where, well, the old story was the long-term relationship I was in with that monster for 11 whole years. Well, toward the first several years were just like a comfortable existence. I just accepted, well, this is what I've chosen. Sure, that might be prettier and that might be nicer, but guess what? If I had that, I'd be thinking that's nicer. So I accepted that, you know what, you can't have it all. The grass is always going to be greener. So I had resigned myself to like being in this long-term situation. So eventually what would happen was this per the other person flipped out and was like disappearing and never there. When, like when I'd wake, I'd come home from work, this person would be asleep on the couch on drugs. And then when I'd wake up in the morning, person would be gone. And then the person would be disappearing off with this person and that person. And what used to be, hey, we're going here next week, it would be, I'm going here next week. And I, I picked up on the clues. It's like, you know what, something's going on. And of course, I made the mistake of saying, you're doing something you shouldn't. And I'd be told, you're paranoid. No, I'm not. But okay, when in all these 11 years, and again, I do that stuff with a logic, like, all the years we've been together, you've never once had a special friend you see all the time, and now all of a sudden, that's all you're... Again, I learned, don't bring it, just keep it to yourself and proceed accordingly. Because you're not going to get... You're isolated with that person. They're not going to tell you, oh, you saw that? Oh, you're right. No, they won't. They're, they're, they're retarded. So anyway, with this person, after being comfortable, thinking I was happy and living the life, then this stuff happened, and it obviously was doing something else. And, of course, these people are not considerate. They have no empathy, because a regular person that does might say, hey, you know what, I don't think this is working. I'm going to try something else. But these don't. They want to keep you in the dark, so you think everything's fine. So even if you question, like, hey, you've been gone every night this week. Is, is anything happening? No, you're crazy. And, of course, it is happening. They are not empathetic. So... <laughs> Forget your empathy for them, because they have none for you. That's a lesson I learned, too. But, anyway, what ended up happening was I went from the comfortable existence of thinking this was the life I've chosen to realizing this life I've chosen is moving elsewhere. Uh, well, what ended up happening was after it became apparent there was somebody else and beyond a reasonable doubt, something else, and I was told to leave and everything, I figured, you know what, I'm too nice. So I started to be secretive. I had a computer in the house, and I would like delete everything, and I'd start like talking to people, saying, you know what, this is horrible, I'm going through, uh, and I get support here and there, but I figured, I better delete this or that creature will come in and find it and use it against me even though he's the one running off with some some blank so so anyway I had to switch my um, game plan because I went from being comfortable thinking this is where I'm supposed to be to I'm not where I'm supposed to be and so I started to have to hide this and hide that and delete this and delete that and it, it just wasn't natural to my nature it's just because I'm not the type of person that wakes up in the morning thinking, I need to scam someone. I need to hide this from someone. I just never was like that. And yet I'm realizing, well, that's what I'm dealing with. So it's kind of like in a battle situation. You, you're a homeowner. You have a house. You take care of it. You water your flowers. And you want the neighbors to be happy. But if some gang of fools comes with a bunch of guns, you're going to have to adjust and adapt. Well, that's what I was doing because... If it was my way, I would just be my normal, regular self. But when you've got a bunch of evil people, or this, in this case, an evil person, 
you have to switch gears, otherwise you'll be run over. So, that's what I did. It's like, okay, I've got to hide my stuff, I've got to be secretive, this person clearly is, and you don't want to give them any am him any ammunition to twist to make you out to be the bad guy, so I was secretive. And I didn't like it, but I thought, you know what? I'm defending myself. Because I had some self-respect. I figured, you know what? I'm not going to continue to be nice and open and tell this person everything when obviously that's not being given in return. So I was secretive. I deleted. I hid things. I was secretive. and That's redundant. But the point was I did all this. Not because that's what I wanted to do. Normally it's because I was, again, adapting to the situation I was in. So, finally it ran its course. I left and was gone and didn't matter anymore. So I was like relieved. Like, oh, I'm out of that. Because again, it's, it's out of character for me. I'm not the type of person that wants to wake up in the morning and plot what scan I'm going to pull on anybody. So what ended up happening was, I was free, I was released, I was on my own, and I learned, I thought, I'm never going through that again, and how could I not see that coming? And then, of course, my mind replayed this and replayed that, and I figured, oh, I should have picked up on that signal. That time I figured something was wrong, it really was, and so on. Well, you have to learn, you live and learn, well, I did. Well, shortly after, I would meet another person, somebody new who I hung out with, and I started witnessing the very same types of things that I saw with the other one. And it was... There were actually two of them, but I went ahead and went through with them because I did go through a traumatic experience, and it's very easy to be confused to think, well, maybe I'm just imagining this new person is basically identical to the last one, so I would keep that to myself. But the point of this was I shouldn't have because both of them turned out to be narcopathic <laughs> monsters with secret hidden lives. And I, of course, made the mistake of saying, you're doing just what the last one did, and I'd be told, oh, you're paranoid, I'm not him. Yet, it's like you're doing the same thing he did. But, anyway, the point is, I would still foolishly hang out with these people, repeatedly. And, of course, just like expected, I uncovered this lie, uncovered that lie, uncovered this problem and that problem. And I started to think the same way. You know what? I'm going to have to start doing my own thing in private. And, again, that's not my normal nature. So I said something to this person, like, you know what, I've caught you now in ten lies. You told me you never lied, and yet you've lied more than I ever have in my entire life. So you know what? And because I was proceeding accordingly, I, was like, I said, I don't like the person I'm becoming by hanging around you. Which was genuine. It was true, because... Again, I don't want to live my life being a scam artist. It just I've never been a scam artist. And so I would say that. Well, guess what? The person would do their gaslighting crap, like, oh, you're just imagining stuff. Oh, you're too you're thinking I'm someone else and they I, of course I was dragged into the brainwashing crap because all the love bombing I figured, well, somebody who feels that strongly clearly couldn't be doing this, but wait a second. He is, uh, and whatever, but the point was the sickening thing was a few weeks or months later, the more I learned about this monster, he was telling the uh, people that he made into flying monkeys, I don't, I don't like the person I've become when I'm with him. My line, which mine was genuine, but he's hijacking my line to get sympathy from the flying monkeys who were manipulative, or who could be manipulated, and like, uh. and again, when you're living through this, you, you notice it, and you think, oh, this is the same thing, but then you want to believe you're wrong, because, again, my di the difference between me and those narcopath fools is they think they have to always be right. 
Well, when I've dealt with several, since I've already known several before, I'm the opposite. I hope that I am wrong, because I think uh, I noticed this. That didn't make sense. Oh, I noticed that. That didn't make sense, and it seems like this is happening, and I'd be like, I hope I'm wrong, but these fools are always right, and it's like such a big contrast. But this is one of the things that these people do, and if you're involved with one, and you've tried to approach it, and you've tried to address things, and you got the same kind of trashy, fake responses, zip your mouth. Assess the situation and realize, well, it's never going to get better. Especially if it started off with that love bombing stuff, and now all of a sudden they're extremely critical. It's not going to get better. They did the love bombing to get the hooks in you. Now that you're there, it's like you're in their cage. So, just quietly step up, leave, and don't give any explanations.